Wow, that's nice. <laughs> Hi, I'm Neville Martin. Welcome to the Guitarist Tone Lounge. I'm Richard Barrett. We've got a couple of orange amps here. Now, there's no huge surprise in that because we've done quite a few orange amps in our tone lounges. Um, these are both new models, and what would you say about that sound that we just heard? Well, it was very much what I kind of expected when I plug into an orange. Yep. yep. Big, big chewy gain big with chewy. lots of clarity without any of those nasty frequencies, you know, where you get the pick transient of the string yep. and think, oh, maybe we can EQ that out. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I never can. Exactly. Um, they've got <clears throat> reverb on them, which is great sounding reverb. Yeah, digital reverb. Yeah, digital reverb, but very nice. Uh, two, they're, they're, they're identical, apart from this is the head version into a cab, not an orange cab, into a cab, and that's exactly the same. It's, into a in, integral into a, so in com combo, yeah. Chances are we'll go through the dials, won't we? I guess in a bit like yeah. we normally do, and we'll probably focus on that one simply because you can see them. I have the same thing here in reverse, actually, is the way yeah. it often is yeah. with combos. Oh yes, that's right. I noticed that a few years ago yeah. with different things. You've got the yeah. combo chassis. I wonder if it's a way that they can tell in the factory or if I'm just making <sighs> yeah, nonsense. I don't, up. Know. I don't know. I mean, off, often it was because in the old days, what, people would have their amps in front of them. The old yes. jazzers would have their, their, their big old guitar and their big old amp, and they'd have the thing there. Later on, it became back line. Well, the other way around. Oh, the other, anyway. way, yeah, the other way around. Um, but they get the same amp, same like, tone layout, tone control layout, volume control, everything. Yep. The same reverb everything um what you might not expect with these amps and especially after you've heard them is they are not valve amps they're solid state now that might strike fear into the hearts of some and i suppose it struck a tiny bit of trepidation into ours at first didn't it yeah because we're conditioned aren't we <sighs> I mean, there was this, it's not that the whole thing of, of valve versus transistor is all nonsense or anything, I'm not trying to say that at all. And I think that it's always subjective as well. So what might work for either of us might not work for the yeah. other or, or whatever. Yeah. But Well, we it, were just talking about Alan Holdsworth, who used to use, everybody knows his tone is legendary. Mm. He preferred transistor amps. He used yeah. various makes of transistor amps. And he made them sound amazing. Um, yes. Some of the heavy metal guys use transistor amps. They, they love them. But anyway, that's all a bit of a waffle, but, but essentially to say that neither of us could really quite believe. We, that we both said before we started the thing, what do they sound like? And Richard said, they sound like orange amps. And that's they what they sound like. They do. I mean, something that I noticed particularly, I don't know if you've noticed that about the head going into the Zilla cab, but for this um, combo here, I found that the bass response was great, really defined. Yeah. This would yeah. make a great metal amp, I think. Yeah. I, Is that a closed back cab? It's not, no, there's a, okay. it's open. So I was able to see the, the speaker. It's a Celestian. I can't remember the number, I must confess. It's, it's 150, it's, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a high weight, a high rated yeah. speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we don't know what's in this. Uh, we do know it's a very nice sounding cabinet, but, uh, yeah. and it, seem to work very well with, with this amp. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed. I mean, essentially, what I've found is that the, with the clean channel and the dirty channel, because you've got the separate EQs, which is a really great thing. I mean, yeah. it's amazing how yeah. many split channel amps or whatever don't have that, yeah. but yeah. you can balance it. And I've found that I quite like it with the bass really ramped yeah. up, but yeah. that's, there's still loads of headroom and a very tight, fast response. I mean, shall I? Yeah, do it, yeah. Do I'm it. not a metal yeah. player, but if I just bring that up to... It's just really... It really holds it together, doesn't it? I bet if together, you drop yeah. your D, your, your bottom, 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 bottom string down to D... I always feel these days like I must look like some kind of employee of the month that ran into a guitar shop to let off steam. Like I say, I'm not, not really a metal guy, but that's the kind of... I mean, that's yeah. going to do it. Maybe it's a little bit too... Um...
It's actually a lot of fun. Sorry, I it really don't actually is. need it, to carry it, on doing that, do I? I'm just... But it, but it really, they really do sound good. I mean, I mean, you could probably that fast response is why a certain type of player. Think how fast Alan Holdsworth played. Yes, uh, he yeah. didn't do any of that chunky rhythmy stuff, but he needed, yeah, but he needed to a fast be there. Response, really and I know that Dimebag from uh, Pantera, he definitely he yeah. was well known for using yeah. solid state, and yeah. he had such a accurate yeah. sort of attack. It's that instant focus sound, isn't it? You need mm. to get the sound there now. Yes. No, no, no kind of out valve amp sag that you get that a lot of people love. I love. Well, I suppose, but the, the thing that I find interesting though is that often I've been conditioned to think, okay, well, you can get that sound, but that comes at a cost because you lose a lot of sweetness yeah. from, from the high notes. And, and I'm not really feeling that there's, no. there's well, too much of that when happening. I, here. When I started that, that's on a. Yeah, that note's got. There's a lot going on in that. I note. can feel that here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. A, a very nice. Well, let, we'll go through the um, go through the controls. Um, as usual uh, with with Orange, that they they've got the graphics or the hieroglyphics hieroglyphs. So two channels. The dirty one is the orange, and the clean one is the the black. The clean one is just treble and bass and treble, and and volume and main volume. And the dirty has the vo uh, gain, bass, middle, treble, and uh, master, it, its own master volume. Then there's the overall master volume, master reverb for both channels, um, and the clean, the dirt, we're on dirty channel at the moment, that fli flips it to the clean channel, and then you've just got your on and off with no standby. Absolutely, and of course that's foot switchable channel as well, yeah, it's just that you've exactly. got a nice metal switch to do that. Uh, yeah, and on that, the front. that, that Re digital reverb is really nice. It's uh, it's quite big. And in fact, in fact, I'll put I'll put it up. That's about, it's about halfway. Well, that's yeah, really, I like <laughs> it. Know. I mean, it's kind of got its own tone, hasn't it? That the reverb. Yeah. Um, that's too much. Apart from you'd use it for a certain. Things I used to know a guitarist, Snail Space Slim from the Hamsters, great British band. Yeah. He would often set it so that he'd have maximum reverb, and he had the reverb on off on the floor, and he'd go and he'd hit a note, and he'd go, um, yeah, and yeah, then, then turn it off. And that's a lovely effect to have uh, one, one. That's time. a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and uh, yeah, lo lovely. So very simple, typical uh, orange layout. Totally fuss free. Yes, um, though they do have some modern conveniences, like there's an effects loop. Yep. Orange never go at anything half heartedly, and we kind of knew before we plugged in, we suspected before we plugged in that, we're gonna, that they were going to have that orange sound, and they did straight away. I said to yeah. Richard, What do they sound like? He said, They sound like an orange. And, and they do. Um, do you want to, should we play something more? Yes, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm wondering whether to go a bit low again. I might I'll, go Peter Greeny. Yeah, let's do that, shall we? I just thought I'd come out of the out of phase a bit and see yeah. with a bit of gain on, because out of phase is often much quieter. Yeah. But I thought with this yeah. sound where it's compressing a bit going in, yeah. 
Um, and, and I remember that they were saying that the, even the Clean Channel, you can push yeah. like you yeah. might a valve amp. And I just thought, what better time to while we're trying to record a bit of music to risk, you know, that going wrong? <laughs> but, <laughs> but it didn't, so that was OK. It, it shows that, the, that, that they've built dynamics into these amps. And yes. very often that was one of the things that criti people criticised about solid state amps, that there's no dynamics. You know, it doesn't clean up when you turn down Oh, the wow. volume, yeah, and, and they the really case. do, yeah. they really do. That, that was a common complaint with the old ones, that they were kind of in your face or nothing in your face. Yeah, on uh, or off. On yes, or off, exactly, yeah. and they're not like that. I mm. mean, that was demonstrating, um, we'd, we'd switch to the clean channel for that. I switched the clean channel on mine and kept a fair bit of reverb on the rhythm. And Richard had quite a bit of reverb on at first, didn't you? I did, yeah. And, and I stayed on the dirty channel but just backed the gain down a bit but chances are I could have achieved something similar by yeah. driving into the, the the clean channel though um, that would have taken a few minutes to set up and I was keen to get playing. Yeah well it <laughs> sounded nice I mean the, um, Richard's Nags has got the um, out of phase in the middle position so you've got that lovely Peter Green, Gary Moore used it as well of course yeah, didn't he, yeah. uh, sound which, which is, is really very musical and very vocal, isn't it? Yeah, it was a completely um, different response than what you'd normally get. Yeah. I mean, I did it myself. I flipped the wires. I did, did took you? a deep breath yeah, and flipped yeah. them, yeah. <laughs> but it's, um, it's very nice how they, that vocal response works really well with that clean-ish yes. ish sound. Yes, in fact, you can really... Um, you know, let me see. Or dig in. I mean, on its own, that's a lot of reverb, so yeah, if I just yeah. take that back a bit. If I just add a little little bit of extra gain to that, um, just, just mm. to demonstrate, really, so mm. that our listeners can hear that. I mean, I'll just come back a bit from there. Again, another criticism that solid state amps always used to have is they don't do the kind of not quite dirty, mm. not quite yeah. thick, clean thing very well. Kind of similar version about they don't clean up turning down. But that, that's a very hard sound to get right, that um, just when the amp's starting yes, to it with work. with hair or whatever. With valve amps, you've got the transformers kind of cooking a bit, you've got the valves start to cook a bit, and then they interact with the speaker and they all start to work together in that wonderful thing. But yes. these are doing just that, aren't they? Yes. They're, they're, they're really, I mean, a typical they're orange livery, the, the, the usual, the usual uh, look, look to them. Looking at that, you wouldn't think, oh, they've done a solid state amp. They just think it's an orange, no, no, an no. orange amp. Uh, the other thing that I've just remembered that wouldn't be nice to mention here is that they do have emulated speaker out. Oh. And there's a choice of open or closed back cab oh, right. for that, that's for good. the different responses that, that you get. So um, that's a nice touch. So you could find your sound, put that straight into a front of house uh, yes, yeah. mixer yeah. or into a recording studio. Play off the monitors if you yeah. wanted to or, or yeah. with something like this, you'd have your sort of speaker on stage. Yeah. And maybe that and a monitor as well. So I'd have it in front of me and behind me and yeah. know that... It yeah, was going to the yeah. front of house with a... And perhaps simultaneously recording at the local 64 track studio. Absolutely. Yeah, I would exactly. I would want that naturally yeah. and maybe have the artwork printed as we were doing the gig. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, perhaps it'd be nice. I'll do a bit more of that going between the clean and the dirty. I'm going yeah. to use the guitar's volume control. So if I just show the sound that I've set up, okay. pretty raucous. <laughs> but it's more than enough for a lot of applications. I'm going to take the reverb down a bit more. There you go, a bit of a sweet spot.
Though it's not like a miracle, no. like you've hit a channel switch, but it's got that more, I don't know, middly uh, compressed. And a, lot, a lot of people like that clean, yeah, I do. you know, mm. the, the 80s clean sound that you used to get on, on sessions, you know, that, that's so crystal clear. But I'll have a look at the clean channel on this one. And because I can turn the knobs and you can see them, Richard will set up a similar thing on his amp where you can't see them. And he'll do the same thing with the humbucking guitar and see the, the difference between how this one will push the amp and how that one will. Mm. Um, I've actually got the gain full up on the clean channel and I've got the master back to about a quarter, I suppose. Quarter yeah. to a third. Yeah. So and that's it. That's great. I mean, there's a yeah. real warmth to it. There is. With the gain yeah. up. I mean, I realise that that's not breaking up in the in the sense, it's not distorting, no, but there is a no. warmth happening there. Exactly. That was everything kind of flattish. I think I had a bit more bass on and a bit less treble. If I put the treble up, that's the, that's the treble up there. Mm. And that's the bass. I'll put the bass up as well because you often get a nice bit of bottom end with that. So. That's lovely, isn't it? It's yeah, got, that's going to really push really, through. Really nice, yeah. It has a thickness, yes, to it. There is. It's a real kind of... You, you can hear all the frequencies very separately, can't yeah. you? That's really lovely. Um, I wonder if you're if you did the same if, well, if you're humbuckers. I'll try that. I mean, because I know yeah. that these technically aren't more powerful, particularly, yeah. but I don't know. Humbuckers do push a bit more. Yeah. So I just before I start, I'm going to make sure I take the master down. Um, I won't be too subtle about this. I'll max out the clean channel master. Yeah. And, and then I'll just bring it up here and. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just go up a tiny bit from there and maybe trim that reverb. Let's try the, the low string thing yeah, to yeah. see. Okay. Yeah, that, that pushes it That's quite a bit more. Um, these aren't powerful strap pickups. They're, they're fat 60s, Fender's fat 60, 60s pickups. And they are, they are a little bit fatter than a normal strap mm. sound. They, they don't have that ultra thin top end to them. Yeah, which, yeah, which they're I, great Which sound. I like, uh, which I like not having there. Mm. Um, but then you, you've kind of got kind of the same version of, of, of uh, humbuckers, haven't you? Yeah, the, these are apparently very similar to the bare knuckle mule there, but yeah. they are bare knuckle, but right. they're, they're yeah. specially wound for this. Yeah, but it's, but it's nice how it, the, the two guitars do sound totally different which you know obviously you'd expect them to but they they work with the amp very differently so if you want well, if you that's something else that might not have happened in the past well, with exactly. a traditional sort of transistor amp like a plank of wood would have yeah, sounded yeah, it's, the same that's exactly right well in summary um i think we both agree that these just sound like orange amps they don't sound like orange solid stable amps do they or fet no. amps they're apparently modeled on the rocker verb yeah which so, I have here. And, and we've played, played those you. enough, I think, to say that, yep. Yeah, we've done tone lounge, toned lounges um, on, on the rocker verbs. 
Mm. And you could always go back and refer to those if you want to listen to those sounds yeah, against, against these think. sounds. They've got everything that you could want on a modern amp, haven't they? Yes, they have, yeah. in, including a selection of um, different impedance speaker outputs. So our impression of the Super Crush 100 is very, very positive, isn't it? Yes. It delivers great, chunky, defined, dirty sounds. Yeah, yeah. And a clean channel, which you can use as a super pristine clean, yeah. or you can push and push, yeah. and it will respond very much the way that you would hope a valve amp would, because they and, don't all respond no, very well. No, and dependent upon what guitar you're using and how heavy yeah. your attack is, they do really do respond to that on both channels. I mean, on the, the dirty channel, you can knock it right back. It doesn't completely clean up if you've got tons of gain on, but no. you wouldn't expect that to. It wouldn't, a valve amp well, wouldn't no, either no. if you had tons of gain on. It would on. mean something was wrong. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We haven't tried pedals through them, but I would imagine that on the clean channel would respond very nicely to, to pedals. Certainly um, by winding up the input gain and hitting it with a neck humbucker, it's, exactly. it's not... No. You know, breaking no, apart. Exactly. And the um, other surprising part is that that looks like a proper grown up orange head. And that looks like a proper grown up orange combo. And about five and a half hundred quid for the. Oh, 599. Five, nine, nine. I looked it up in a couple of places and okay. they were all 599. Nine. Okay. So and that seems it... to be a realistic sort of street. Price. Okay, it's a four three nine for the head. Is it four three nine? You yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I, and I saw one yeah. for four two nine. Okay, so that's about the price that they're going for. But that's a serious amount of amp for your money, and again, not a serious amount of solid state amp. That's amp. I would say that that we're getting to a very interesting stage with the development of solid state amps. We are. We are indeed yeah. because the less yeah. you know, less weight to carry around. Yeah. All that kind. Of, I mean, I know we have all the all the modelling and all that kind of stuff. And you know, it's, that's very good as well. Yeah. But if if somebody wants an amp to take somewhere, you know, maybe there isn't a great PA rig and they think, I just want to be self-contained. Yeah. I want to take my yeah. combo, a couple yeah. of pedals. Yeah. And these are basically zero maintenance. Speaking of somebody that had to quickly put some old preamp tubes in my backup amp recently and hoped that they were going to make it through, yeah. the, through the show, then I'm particularly yeah. well disposed towards something like this. Yeah, yeah. And, and my feeling is orange don't need to put out amps like no. this. And the last thing that they would want to do is put out something that doesn't live up to their standards, which I know from playing virtually everything they've put out are very, very high. Yeah, the engineers are great, the designers are great. Uh, and everything that we've tried orange has just met and exceeded our expectations. And I'd say these definitely have too. Yeah.